Extrapelvic compression of the sciatic nerve is also known as the deep gluteal syndrome. The sciatic nerve may be compressed at different points during its trajectory in the deep gluteal space. A common compression site is when the sciatic emerges under the muscle belly of the piriformis. Surgical release is indicated after failure of conservative therapy. Release of the tendinous portion of the piriformis at its insertion on the greater trochanter is indicated when the sciatic nerve emerges under the muscle belly of the piriformis. This schematic representation demonstrates the sciatic nerve and its relationship with the muscle belly of the piriformis. Only when the sciatic emerges as a single trunk under the muscle belly of the piriformis is release at the tendinous portion indicated. We position the patient in the lateral decubitus. In this case, a right side is operated. Note the leg is draped free to facilitate mobility. A spinal needle is in position on the lateral aspect of the greater trochanter. Instruments are in position in the proximal and distal trochanteric portals. This schematic representation shows the position of the spinal needle on the lateral aspect of the greater trochanter. In figure A, the position of the skin incisions relative to the spinal needle is observed. Figure B represents the window created on the iliotibial band. By creating an incision on the iliotibial band proximal and distal to the position of the spinal needle. This fluoroscopy image demonstrates the spinal needle on the lateral aspect of the greater trochanter. The spinal needle is identified endoscopically lateral to the iliotibial band. Using a radio frequency hook probe, incisions are created proximal and distal to the spinal needle on the iliotibial band. Anterior and posterior incisions are also created at the mid portion of the longitudinal cut. The posterior superior corner of the greater trochanter is identified and dissected using a shaver and radio frequency instruments. The position of these instruments is confirmed using fluoroscopy. The objective is to identify the insertion of the piriformis tendon. A radio frequency hook probe is used to release the piriformis tendon on a retrograde fashion. The position of the radio frequency hook probe can be confirmed using fluoroscopy. As the tendon is released, the posterior hip capsule can be observed underneath. Once the tendon is completely released, the stump retracts laterally. Instruments are then brought deep into the subgluteal space to expose the sciatic nerve. In this example, a shaver is used to dissect around the sciatic nerve. Fibrous bands around the sciatic nerve are dissected and resected using a shaver. Note how careful dissection is performed around the sciatic nerve. The shaver is used around the sciatic nerve for a complete release. Note how, as the release of the fibrous tissue progresses, the nerve is decompressed and the vasa nervorum becomes more apparent. Once the release is complete, a nerve stimulator is used to verify nerve conduction.